I just said, like, Claire's gone. What happened from there? Um, well, basically, we're like, obviously, we went and, like, went looking, checking, making sure, like, you know, she wasn't around the tent. Um, and then we, we got in the car, like, you know, driving around everywhere. We could, we, we grew up here. Um, Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Cleo Smith has been found alive, alive and well. And that is an incredible result in this case. Usually these cases do not end well, let alone happily ever after. According to CNN, and I'll put a link to that in the description, Deputy Commissioner Colonel Blanche said he announced and he did posted the announcement on Facebook that in the early hours of this morning the Western Australia Police Force rescued Cleo Smith and she was found by the police alive and well at a residence only seven minutes from her parents' home. The little girl identified herself as Cleo. I think she said something like my name is Cleo when one of the uh, officers who found her picked her up and asked what her name was. And so this is a really happy ending just in time for Christmas after a, a nightmare, right? Uh, it's a very unusual, in fact, exceptional case for a number of reasons. Children snatched by abductors, especially strange abductors who this person does appear to be, usually don't end happily ever after like this. Now, like this one. Now, we don't know for a fact whether it is a strange abductor. Um, at this point, it does appear to be a strange abductor. It's not completely strange in the sense that the abductor almost lived in the same neighborhood. He lived seven minutes away from the Smith family in Carnarvon, right? And so it does raise the question, did the abductor go to the blowholes and did he encounter Cleo there? Did he know to find her there? And was this premeditated or was it opportunistic? If it was opportunistic, well, then when was this opportunity? So something else just to mention, after Cleo's discovery, and this is mentioned on, uh, on CNN, um, a criminologist from New South Wales, uh, Xantha Mallet, said that the chance of finding a missing child after a suspected abduction by a stranger were very low, in his words. Um, and not just that, when the length of time that goes by that has gone by in this case, 19 days, almost three weeks, um, it is sort of common sense to actually think the worst. And what this case shows is um, anything can happen in true crime. There are statistics, there are patterns, there are intertextualities, there are things that we'd anticipate and sometimes a case comes along that breaks all of those rules, right? If you take what we know now, that Cleo was in someone else's custody for three weeks, and it was turning out to be a very, very high-profile case, and the child was still well looked after, one wonders what the intentions were of this individual. What were they short-term, what were they medium-term, and did he have any long-term plan? And the, the home that the abductor lives in, the street, he doesn't seem to be a well-heeled fellow. And one wonders, what was that all about? You know, what, what is his motive? What was his motive? What was he going to do? Did the reward and did the, um, I don't want to even say furore, but did the focus on this case dissuade this individual from doing something that he intended to do? Did the pleas by this couple... Um, change the abductor's mind or his actions in some way. The other thing that is pretty amazing is that it f feels like police work solved this case. I don't know whether a tip materialized. I don't know whether anyone came forward. It's not clear whether anyone claimed the one million um, in Australian dollar reward, which is quite a substantial sum. So what we do know is immediately preceding Cleo Smith's discovery, the cops were sifting through garbage at the campsite. Did that, did that lead them to find an address or some information leading them to that address at the private home, just 30 miles from the campsite? The officers also had to have known that they were on the right track because I don't think that they, and I could be wrong on this, but I don't think that they simply 
knocked on doors, although that is actually something that was happening as well. They were doing uh, door searches. But the impression I don't I get is they didn't simply um, knock on the door. For some reason, they knew that this house in Carnarvon, this locked house, was the house they were looking for because they actually broke into it. They broke into the, the gate, the outside gate, and then they broke into the locked house. And so either the, someone had spotted Cleo inside or they had probable cause, a good reason to go into the home. And one wonders, did they get the reason at the campsite going through the garbage or was it by systematically going through the neighborhood? Whatever it was, it shows that there was fantastic police work that ultimately solved this case. So I want to end this video with a question and I want to ask you the question. In my previous video, which I actually put up prior to probably while the well, while Cleo was actually being discovered, um, and then I fell asleep. It's uh, almost two o'clock in the morning where I am. I actually fell asleep while the video was rendering it and then posted it as I saw that the news that she was actually found. But I want to ask you guys, do you think the crime was opportunistic? Given that the abductor lived seven uh, seven minutes drive, I guess, from the Smith home. Given the location of the abductor from the home, do you think it was random or do you think it wasn't a coincidence? So, you know, the other thing which is also quite curious is it raises the question, was she abducted from the campsite or from the home? And if it was from the campsite, was it simply a coincidence that the abductor saw her there? Or had the abductor seen her there many times previously? So I will also put a link in the description so you can see footage of the media and the police outside the house also talking to neighbors. Thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time.